In Marvel Studios' Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, we get a close look at the MCU's next big bad, Kang the Conqueror. And to help us break down the design behind this multiversal miscreant, I'm here with the director of visual development at Marvel Studios, Andy Park, and concept artist, Constantine Sakaris. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Let's dive in. Kang is such an iconic character and fans have been eagerly awaiting his big screen debut. So tell us where you started with developing the Conqueror variant of this character. Whenever we're tackling any particular villain, when we're trying to translate comic into the MCU, we always do a deep dive into the comic books. Of course, starting off with Jack Kirby. Jack Kirby just had this design sense of just making characters look iconic, just very simple and bold. So this is our chance to come up with the classic look that we see from the comic. The purples, the greens, the helmet, the blue visage. One of the very first inspiration images that was given to me was of Kang just sitting on his throne. He's called Kang the Conqueror for a reason. There's a certain status that you see in him. That's where we started. The challenge in bringing these classic comic book costumes and looks into the MCU is we're always trying to bring a reality. So with Kang, it was bringing in the high-tech futuristic elements into his costume. A big part of it was his helmet. Now, this helmet is really unique from others we've seen. Was there a certain functionality you needed to hit with the design? Whenever we design helmets, it's always such an important element to the costume, because at the end of the day, that's what we're looking at, right? In the original Jack Kirby design, he's got more of like a sort of like toaster square helmet. That started to become a little bit um, not as functional. We had played with adding a clear face shield that allowed then the actor to not have something on his face or cover up his face. It was very important for Peyton and the leadership of Marvel to not lose his performance. And even the question of will his face be blue or will it just be Jonathan Majors? We explored both. Everything from having blue lights emit from the sides of the helmet in towards the face, projecting and giving him a blue tinge to you know more the high tech elements of maybe kind of an energy shield that kind of conforms to the face that gives him a blue look. We explored a lot of different textures, different hues of blues. In the end, it was like, how much can we still see Jonathan Major's face without seeing the sort of like blue face shield? So in the end, um, it was just something very simple. Ah, simple but so very effective. Now, what other details did you focus on to help craft the narrative of Kang's backstory? Yeah, the look that we're going for is more the Conqueror Kang. So he really has like this regal kind of quality to him with the cape, the robes that harken back to conquerors of the past in human history. But then we also wanted to infuse suggestions of this is a Kang from the future that has access and developed high weaponry, high sophisticated technology, even the way we designed the cape. It's a little different than just a normal cape as it's segmented. So bringing the technology along with the kind of more grounded robe type of feel. He's got this motif on his face, these sort of like lines that is very iconic. And so in the fabrics, you see that a lot with uh, some of these lines and textures that give strength to the character. Can you tell us more about the design decisions behind the lines on his face? In this respect, you have um, two sort of like vertical line designs, meaning he's got the scars on his face. And then when you do see him with a sort of like blue face guard, you've got tech lines. A lot of different kind of patterning was done by the different artists. And then at the end of the day, once we got that approved, the makeup department led by Alina Arroy played with the ideas of doing different scars on Jonathan Major's face. And it also alludes to why he has the lines in that blue energy kind of mask. But there's a story that maybe, maybe we'll, we'll find out, or maybe we won't. Ooh, we love a good cliffhanger. Now your team has brought such an awesome look for Kang. What are you most proud of when looking back at the process? I'm very proud of how the design looks on paper and then also how it was translated. So I'm gonna have to also give kudos to the costume department and props for translating this character in the real world. I'm most proud of 
you know, my team of artists and seeing that Kang is pretty darn, you know, comic accurate. You know, I feel like this is, this is a Kang that I've been wanting to see, that fans have been wanting to see. We stayed as true as we could to the comic source. Hopefully we're not letting any fans down. I think it looks amazing. I, I, every time I see it, it puts a smile on my face. Uh, we're all smiling too. Well, except for Kang, he's not a smile, he's a conqueror. Never mind. Uh, well, listen, Andy, Constantine, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thanks, Langston. Thank you. And of course, everyone, go experience Marvel Studios' Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania in theaters now.